So, um, you might come from the background of uh, <laughs> two, two dimensional art mostly for like 20 odd years doing illustration. Um, we've got some album covers, book covers, lots of website design, things like that. Um, and I did a lot of community arts work as well in my life. Yeah. It's outside London in the UK. Um, I ended up doing workshops. During one of these workshops with school children, I got to um, try uh, a HTC Vive and use tilt brush. And as someone who had been sort of quite intimidated by 3D, um, I found it extremely intuitive and accessible. So most of this is sort of just uh, documentation of my love affair with uh, various sketches of Russian VR um, and, and my journey through that. So I'll show you some examples of the stuff I've made. Um, I, I, I really think these tools are, um, I just saw it earlier actually with the elephant. That was a graphic sketch example, and that's what most of my eyes. This is just a um, few images of some of the stuff I was doing in that time. Um, and I'm just going to move to the next one. So I carried on doing workshops with children um, and I did it for a few years and I tried my best to try to monetize Tilt Brush, which was quite hard because it's gone something you sell. Um, but to get grants uh, to, with, from Art Council um, and other uh, sponsors, I was able to work with up to 30 kids at a time going into schools and, and showing this intuitive, accessible 3D offering software. Um, try and share it with as many youth as possible. Um, around this time, uh, I, like late 30s, I was diagnosed with ADHD as well. Um, so I did a lot of work with autistic kids, uh, they did age children, um, and I, I would also add adults. Uh, we, we saw, I, I saw a great example of how intuitive interfaces like this can really engage people that are by the way intimidated by computers or um, like just want to have a, a, a way of shining out the world and focus on what they're creating. So this is some uh, little glitches made by some children, these like eight, nine year olds, uh, using tilt brush. They were all uh, 3D printed as well and sent in little gifts to their homes after, after the fact. Um, there we go to the next one. So, COVID hit and I couldn't do any of my work. I was also doing stuff in hospitals with terminally ill children as well. I couldn't do that anymore. Um, and I was doing live tilt brush as the shop for the DJs and club nights and things like that and having a really good time sort of desperately trying to sort of make a living out using these tools. Um, and then during lockdown I learned about crypto art and NFTs and I decided to stick the headset on, scribble as much as I could to see what came out and see if I could sell it. Uh, and I did, I mean, I got into Super Rare, I sold a piece of Super Rare as a one of one and then that's like maybe four, or four years ago now and I've been selling VLR, Wolford, Crypto Art as, as my acquiring source of income ever since. Uh, this was Mastro Shaman, this was my JSP, sold on Super Red to an artist called Colby. Um, and I found a really supportive community of people all over the world who are just a really unusual underground art scene of, of weirdos. And um, I really decided to enjoy collecting art as well. That slide was supposed to be before that. Uh, one of the things I did here was uh, using augmented reality, brought this Astro Shaman character um, into AR, so you could display the market image on an iPad or print it off and then bring it into your home with you. What you'll see throughout these slides is um, me trying as much as I can to make use of XR technology, AR and VR specifically, um, and now more risk this past the technology as well. So you can see here that you can pick up the iPad and it's attached to it. A lot of you have seen this sort of stuff before, but at the time there was nobody else doing this with NFT, so it, it, it was a good start. So then um, I decided I wanted to make something a little bit inspired by some of the toys that I like when I grew up and uh, on Nifty Gateway that allowed you to do like a blind pack. And I thought that was pretty really exciting, so I came up with eight weird little creatures. Um, you'll see the design of these characters is, is somewhat naive. Um, I often describe them as my little balloon animals. They are made of sort of like brush strokes, so you pull the trigger and you draw a shape in the air and then you can sort of tweak that shape after the fact and then add materials afterwards. Um, but uh, that's one of these is like one of them and some of them are, are, are more common and it was a really exciting time uh, during just before the start of the NFT euphoria. This just sold out, I'd never in my life, I mean, I money for my art really, this directly is this up until this sort of NFT craze started. And uh, I continued to design art that really sort of showed how it was made. I didn't really want to 
create 3D objects that could have been made in other ways. I mean, they could, but you will see that there's lots of sort of um, brush, gestural brushstrokes and things throughout these models. And I think that by leaning into that and using a tool like that, it's, um, my art looks a little bit different to some of the other stuff out there. These are all just examples of some of the things. This for someone, uh, anyone who's worked with 3D printing in the for something like this was a bit of a nightmare to do. But um, somebody had collected this on Nifty Gateway and then 3D printed it and showed me the 3D printed. So that was really cool, a really cool moment for me to see someone have done that. Um, the thematically, I'm really interested in trying to see nature represented in the, in the metal bags, uh, especially the sort of nature that isn't necessarily shown. Um, rather than apes and baseball caps and teddy bears and dogs and things like that, I wanted to do something that sort of um, brought nature into the metal bags, but also isn't, it's, this nature isn't necessarily our friend. Um, I've done a lot of portal designs, but they were inspired by carnivorous plants. The idea being that yes, the metal bags is exciting, and yes, this technology is beautiful, but let's not like pretend that it isn't sort of a, a way of having complete dominion over nature. You know, we don't want to completely put leaves up and forget about the real world. So I thought it might be quite nice to experiment with the idea that there are living entity, entities in the inner metaverse, or there will be, that don't necessarily like this and, and they might surprise us. Um, so I've got, I've got my ambition to plug in to see AI brains into these, into these characters. So this is a portal, it's a, actually it's, it's an inner motorverse space and um, the idea is that it's kind of pretty and uh, it places you in to spike by deep seek mesh and, uh, and then other sort of like predators that are sort of uh, hypnotizing. This is another example of that. This is an installation actually that I'm quite finished. This is just the first design for it. This is the future of Veil. The idea for this is it can be in a lot of workplace, maybe a mind or a lot of workplace uh, like platform. And if you walk through, if you log in with your wallet and you walk through this, it wipes your wallet and deletes all of your money in NFT. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I, will, I will send that link out for everybody, uh, sure we. Uh, I just think it's interesting thing to think about. You might actually want that. You might want to wipe this. this the memory of you know, <laughs> especially if you've know, been in the NFT space for a few years, there might be some things you just want to get rid of. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like a weird digital surf game. <laughs> Not one I do with the kids in workshops. Um, this is another example of one of these things. It's uh, it's another portal. The idea is that you walk in with your avatar, you've been up up inside it. It's designed to look pretty, um, make quite exciting. But uh, when you do visit it, oh, that's, I'm sorry, but when you do visit it, when you go up inside the Motorverse space in the, in the browser, uh, you find all this pretty sort of like owl face. There's actually like an insect and the whole thing is a camouflage, but sort of butterfly thing with teeth. <laughs> this is a sprite. Um, it's a weird jacky little animation, but it is. It looks the way it does because it's actually not animation at all. It's me puppeteering. You can't see me in there because I'm not picked up by the software, but I am just moving meshes around the gravity sketch uh, and then speeding it up. So I did this sort of transformational thing where you sort of slices a little spark and then it grows, they become sentient and it disappears back into the sort of feature of it. There is supposed to be sound there, but. Um, these are some of my other characters. Uh, these are just some more little broken creatures. No wild range TOVs as well, so any of my collectors can import these into the 3D spaces or see them in, in AR. Um, and I won't go into it, but there's actually a tree of life and all related to each other. So there's like three levels of evolution of the jellyfish, three levels of evolution of this diet, very, very bad. And all sort of bright, all quickly in an NFC and uh, uh, brains into a PC brain system. So these are all sold out. I did extremely well, got very lucky during the NFT euphoria. And what happened is I, I started to realize that what I can do in this trying to develop a game world to do some world building, but the fact that I'm being supported by hundreds of patrons around the world to do this is, I think it's just incredible and something that I wouldn't have thought ever possible, especially if somebody doesn't come from the game world, but I think that's still very ambitious and I expect to be able to build at least a living environment <coughs> where some of these animals will surprise you, but um, 
dependent on the intelligence within the CAI if they might end up becoming oracles or friends or anything, not necessarily just bumping your wildlife. Cool. cool, so yeah, this is a major space. This was all made in gravity sketch, and uh, you can see me running out of it's just about bright enough for you. Most of these characters in here were, were um, you've seen them already, but it's just an example of seeing how this little sort of uh, Amit Crab guy can be a little AR thing or a 3D print, but also when you jump, when you put it into a VR space, it becomes huge. Seeing these things in virtual reality um, is, is, is a uh, thing so I mean, um, For me personally, I just love the fact that like, I don't, as the artist, I can rem remember drawing these things and I love the one-to-one -one relationship like, within the space, sharing it with this like spatial design calls. Um, and then you can see all of the brush tricks. There's the uh, Saracenia vortex we saw earlier. You can see it's slightly waving and it's there to uh, sort of hypnotize you and entice you in. And that just takes you through a friend of mine's uh, meta space. So it's a bunch of portal that just have a sort of like a carnivorous due to plant. Uh, the cow that you saw earlier, sorry, these are in the wrong order, but that one that we saw earlier is also an AR uh, face uh, mask on uh, Instagram. So it's just something that I'm how you can just repurpose these things. Um, the director here it doesn't know that there's things set on the back of it to the her for him. Now this one is a gravity sketch gym. I am building a, a, a little what you see. It's a, I 3D printed it on a resin printer, made 21 of these. Um, but this is the original cast and we made a tool and I um, poured in a mix of bronze, actual bronze, and resin, and then I put an NL marker in front of it. And then one collectors, I saw 21 um, uh, gold ones, and some bronze and some pearl ones, and 15 actual bronze ones. And what I did was I used it as a means to continue delivery of value and entertainment to my collectors. So I curated a show of other artists' work through the sculpture itself. So every Friday, um, they would get an email, they'd go to their mantel piece or their desk, wherever their collectible was, hold up their phone, scan the marker, and they'd get a new bit of artwork and a link to an NFT to download it, be introduced to a new artist. So I found artists in, in the community that needed a bit of boost, they would catch them to our collectors through the sculpture. This is Cal. Again, this should have been a, a little bit earlier on, but you can see you jump in with your uh, pretty little avatar, go up the lift, and um, this, this, none of the other metaverse platforms are looking as good as this, using the unit as a favorite moment last week, so I could make some really nice likes. Um, and in here, I also am playing a video of the creator of the Cal Avatar. Um, and in here, I also am playing a video of the creation of the piece that you're in in Rarit the Sketch. I join. You know that. Here are the <laughs> uh, artworks being delivered to the, to the Cyclops. This is something I'm trying to work on more. Uh, I'm working on something in the moment used to arrive in Pi instead of the sticker so that you have a touch screen and you can just change and choose what the uh, mail delivers to you. Um, I've also used it to deliver a full heavy metal album. I, 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 I commissioned with the profits made from the sales of these sculptures. I commissioned a dude metal band to make a, an EP for me, and that was delivered to everybody with a, a, a 3D vinyl and it's three, three tracks. This is silly, a friend of mine in the UK, and, and uh, this is Sutu. Some of you may have heard of Sutu, he's very big in the AMT space, and as a digital artist, that was one of his contributions to the Psychonics project. All in all, there was about 10, maybe 12 artists that were involved. Then I went on to this one. This was a one-off. Um, it's, it's it's an evolution of the Cyclops. Um, it's called the Basilisk. It used the same sort of technology, although it's larger, and it was gold-painted. I literally sent it off to be playing in gold. Um, and then I took it to an event, um, Dreamverse, which was hosted by Metroverse, who were the ones who selected the, the Beatball um, collection for 69 million and really sort of kickstarted the popularity craze. 
they, they um, invite me to curate a show in Manhattan and I was one of a few kinds of curators and I created this golden basilisk specifically for that. Um, I commissioned a friend of mine who does cymatic art. He had a toothpaste cap, put it on a speaker, played music through it with lights coming across the surface. So these patterns are geometrically seen through using water and light. And um, when you hold your phone up, you trigger the thing and it plays this bespoke music. Uh, and obviously this is this what it looked like. So it's not special effects, it's literally a video. Um, masked off as a circle on the front of a dog cleaning cobra. Um, it was stolen from the gallery and never seen again. Uh, but funnily enough, it still sold at auction the next day for several grand. Um, so I had to make it a send So that was a really interesting discussion point. Um, I had a brief moment of virality with the meta heist hashtag, and it, we never found out who it was. Although two months later, uh, New Year's Eve, I got a notification on my phone from Snapchat saying somebody was playing with a cobra. Uh, I just didn't tell where they were. But luckily for me, I replaced the artwork, so they never actually saw the cymatics. I did this the day it was stolen. I went back to my hotel room, fuming, and decided to replace it with a more personal message for Finn. So that's quite a cool thing you can do with AI, you can change it after the fact. This is the third evolution of the jellyfish uh, cedar. It was part of the same drop as the basilisk, actually, and it was shown up on the screen at Mecca, so the, the big blue ring. These are all made of gravity sketch. This is another way of not being good seeing. It's an example of a 3D printed portal um, inspired by deep sea fish and um, terrifying portals. And it's the same product as uh, of the uh, Cyclops, although this time with the NFC to create, so you don't need to go to the URLs on the phone, you just tap your phone on the sculpture and it comes alive. But again, on the, the little bit was made by a sketch, the rest is made by a sketch as well, this would have been a bit of blender, so animation. This is a new piece that I did a couple of weeks ago, um, using a, a, a really cool little uh, twist on the GOV format. It's inspired by shadow work and obsidian mirrors. Uh, the idea that uh, the ancient Aztecs used to use polished mirrors to talk to the uh, to the demons or the gods or, or, or to reflect on their own dark side. Um, with this interesting little masking feature of this cube, and if you spin it around, you see the reflection there. Uh, but on the other side, you'll see uh, wiggles of the young guy. So this is a GLB that you can view in AR will be out to spin around, but as you spin in, different scenes because you're masking up each of those faces. So that was the main stuff tells us, and, and, and it's, it's, it's up and being like this environment. Uh, this is me just uh, trying to come up with an idea for humanoids that are going to exist in this um, distant AI-driven world that I'm building. Um, all done without any plan. He's actually the next, the third step in evolution of a spider that I did this in one of the previous sets. It's called the Soothsayer. The idea is I, I visualise these guys at the edge of the metaverse, like as, as, as the pixels are forming. Um, uh, it moving into uncharted territory in additional spaces. And he's sort of at the front, that's why it's called Super Saiyan. Um, he's not animated yet, but I really want to use AI. In fact, all of this work is inspired by AI. The big I rarely use the tools. It's inspired by me trying to sort of reconcile um, with the fact that, uh, uh, yeah, these, these, these sort, of, sort of things are just going to be manifesting in these digital spaces and probably having a, a life of their own and sentience at some point. And how would they, how would they represent themselves? I don't think they'd necessarily want to look like humans. <laughs> Whether they want to look like jellyfish or crap or something like that. But. And this is my last piece. This is, this is my most recent one. Again, you can see it's still gravity sketch. It's still all hand drawn. Um, it's animated. Um, and unfortunately, because of the problems I've had today with technology, you can't see the video of it. But it's actually a hologram, a physical hologram. Um, and it's, uh, it's got 5,760 photos and make it 3D three dimensional. So it's this uh, representation of um, not very anthropological AI entity living in a glass cube. Um, and I'm very ambitious to try to bring the agencies alive. So you can look at it, it's a three dimensional thing. 
and you can have conversations with it. And that's it. Thank you very much for paying attention. <laughs>